today we're looking at the Mesolithic period, which is, if you're a student of the new Junior Sir course, you don't need to worry about. But if you're a student of the Junior Sir course who's taken it in 2020, then this is something that we still need to know about. Now, the Mesolithic period is part of the three Stone Age periods, or three early Irish settling periods that we will look at. We'll have the Mesolithic, we'll have the Neolithic, and then moving away from the Stone Age slightly, we'll be going into the Bronze Age. So, what does Mesolithic mean? Mesolithic means Middle Stone Age. Remember, M for Meso, M for Middle, and then Lithic, anything to do with Lithos, is Stone. So, the Middle Stone Age period. If you're looking at this question, it's normally in those question one, two, and threes. Occasionally, you may see it as a question four as a people in history, but it would be much more common at an ordinary level. So if you're a higher level student, you'd really be focusing on question one, two, or three. Now, within those questions, though, whether you're doing an ordinary level or whether you're doing a higher level, it is a question that you need to look at. So one of the first things that would be there is we're looking at the evolution of the first Irish. The first Irish settlers, who were they? Where did they come from? And again, how does our country grow? How does it develop? Now, what you see here is a picture of snow, of ice, of what you'd associate with, you know, a skiing resort or Arctic caps. But this is what Ireland would have looked like roughly around 12,000 years ago. So it was fairly uninhabitable. But when the Ice Age ended, all of a sudden, there's evidence that we know from archaeology of various plants delivering or developing. And with the evidence of plants, you have evidence of the sustainability of life. And with the sustainability of life, that would eventually mean that migration would happen to Ireland. So there we have the Kurroks, an example of how people arrived. So if you're in the ordinary level, you have to describe how Ireland was originally covered in ice and again... That what we would consider the native Irish weren't native Irish and would have travelled in these currocks. And these currocks would have been dug out, hollowed out canoes. Fairly self explanatory about why we know it's called Stone Age because the tools and materials that they used were made from stone. Now, Mesolithic sites. Key Mesolithic sites here would be Mount Sandal in County Derry. I suppose the first major settlement of people arriving in Ireland. And it's one of the, the best preserved ones as well as our example. So people came from Britain, they came from Gaul, they came from Switzerland. So when you look at it, it's important to remember that a lot of Kel what we call Celtic cultures and the Celtic art and design would have come from Gaul and would have had an, another effect called Latira in Switzerland. And they would have arrived in Ireland around the years 7000 BC. Mount Sandal as it is today. Now, Houses were settled near the rivers, the lakes, or the coast. Obviously enough, once you settled, you know, it was easy to start building houses there and there, or building settlements in this case. The other thing, though, much more practical, it was a source of fresh water for drinking. It was a source of water for cleaning. And also, it was a source of food. So houses, you know, light branches of trees woven across, would use whatever was available materials at the time, like... Uh, animal skins or grass or bushes and again evidence of this would be seen in the post holes that you can find so that's just an example there's a vi very good video on youtube from ucd's history society showing what one of these you know original mesolithic settlements would have looked like and it's well worth a watch if you're interested in that Again, Stone Age tools, very simple, made of stone for axes, hammers, basically whatever was on hand at the time. As well as that, the jewellery, the bracelets, bracelets, necklaces, earrings, all made out of stone. Then the working tools. So again, nothing was wasted here. These people lived off the land. The stone around them was used, as we said, for accessories for their clothing. Axes were used for cutting down wood for fires and for building their housing materials. Spears and arrows, same thing for both defence and for, you know, hunting and for the food. And then there was hunting and fishing. So the early Mesolithic settlers in Ireland and the early Irish would have been called hunter-gatherers. 
Now, you will see this term a lot. If you're using your people in history question, you have to mention them as hunter-gatherers. But it's also a very, very common question that occurs in your short questions, in the question tree section. And that quite simply is, how it's asked, what were the hunter-gatherers? Now, you need to give two pieces of information to get full marks here, and the examiners are very, very specific and particular about this. So who were the hunter-gatherers? So the hunters were the men who hunted the wild animals. The gatherers were the women and children who gathered the nuts and berries. Very important to differentiate between the two. What's also interesting to note, as well as the weapons that you can see here, also the animal skins used as clothing, used for warmth, for capes, for cloaks, even for undergarments, as we can see here, because absolutely nothing on the animal was wasted. Every These people lived off the land and they used every single part of it. So the people in the Mesolithic period were known as these hunter-gatherers, and it's important to associate the hunter-gatherers with the Mesolithic period specifically, and I will explain why in our next video on the Neolithic period. So as the hunters, the men would have been looking for the wild boars, they've had birds, native birds to Ireland, such as duck, dove, pigeons and grouse, and for those of you who don't know, grouse would be a sort of similar to a pheasant. They also settled near the lakes and rivers for fish, like salmon, trout and eel. While the men hunted and fished for that, the women, as the gatherers, gathered the berries and the hazelnuts. The animals then were cooked over what's known as spits. So spits are like those modern barbecue pits that you see here, where a pole would be put through the entire animal from one end of it to the other, and it's slowly rotated and cooked over fire. The idea of slow roasting and slow cooking. It was the only option for them at the time. And another way of describing the hunter-gatherers would be that they'd be nomadic people. So that they were, as well as hunter-gatherers, they were travellers. Travelled from place to place, they had no fixed home. That makes them nomadic. So this is what we're looking at here. Just have a link at the end of the video if you're interested in knowing more about Mount Sandal and more about the settlements. Thank you for watching and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye. -bye.